Ferrari of Denver is proud to sponsor the live broadcast of the 30th anniversary of Automezzi Colorado. As you're aware, it's been a difficult year to find creative ways to continue to support not only all the amazing nonprofits in Colorado, but also the automotive community and you, the Tufuzi. We'd like to thank all of our clients and friends who continue to support Ferrari of Denver, giving us the ability to give back to our community. From toy drives to track days to rallies and new model unveils, it just would not be the same without the wonderful folks around us. Be safe, stay positive, be kind, and we hope you enjoy the show. We look forward to seeing everyone in the showroom soon. Ciao. Well, good morning and thank you for joining us as we come to you live from the Jefferson County Fairgrounds in Jefferson County, Colorado, as we embark on something new and uncharted here this morning for the 30th anniversary of Automezzi. I'm Fox 31 News anchor Jeremy Hubbard, joined by my co-host here, Rachel Elena, and also by Jerry Caruso, whose charity we are here to support this morning, and the woman responsible for everything that's happening out here in Jefferson County this morning, Gina Hallisley. This is Automezzi 30. It is a very different event than we've ever done before. By order of the health department, we're keeping our distance here and we certainly have our masks at the ready and uh, we know that everybody else out here joining us is today. Thankfully you are there in the comfort of your own home and you don't need to have a mask. You can just sit here and take in all things beautiful and Italian. Have, have you ever done, done anything like this, this Rachel? No, no I haven't <laughs> but I'm super excited to be a part of it. It's a wonderful charity. Jerry's been telling me all about it and I'm so thrilled to be a part of something that's going to be helping families of children in need. So yeah. I think it's Jerry, great. Jerry and his charity, Caruso Family Charities, do amazing work here in Colorado. We're going to talk about that momentarily. I want to talk to Gina Hallisley, who is putting on this event again this year. Gina, so many events around the country and certainly here in Colorado have canceled. Why did you go ahead with Auto Metsy this year? Well, first of all, it's a car show, so people are in their cars, which, which makes it a little bit easier to social distance. So we went, because of it, it was our 30th, we didn't want to cancel such an important year in our history. We have a, it's actually worked out great to have it all on video because it'll live forever on YouTube. So we, were, we themed it after La Passeggiata in Italy, which is actually happening right now as we speak. It's six, six o'clock-ish in Italy and La Passeggiata is happening. People are coming out to see, to see things and be seen. And so we are in the spirit of La Passeggiata. We are doing that with our Italian marks today. And we're represented by all the Italian marks and we'll have lots of feature videos and live interviews. So we have a really great lineup of cars, over 60 cars and a great showcase and lots of sponsor interviews. So I hope that you will stay tuned for the whole thing because there's some really good stuff down towards the end. Oh, good. We're excited <laughs> for that. You mentioned, uh, mentioned these feature videos. Should we get to the first one? Should we just get to this and start it all off? Well, we have some people that actually are joining us and they are coming over. So they're rallying over. All the cars rallied over today to join us. So all from their different points to join us here today. And so we're going to throw it to I think it's Jason at Maserati. So let's throw it to Jason. Ah, it's gonna be a great day. This is Jason from the Maserati Club. Just got the Maser fired up, about ready to head over, rally to Automazi. Celebrate with my Italian car enthusiasts. Let's see what Ferrari's up to. Ciao. Hey, it's Derek here from Ferrari of Denver, getting ready to rally over to the Automazi, a great Italian showcase of automobiles. See you soon. See you guys later. Here we are, uh, Sunday morning again, and we're off to Auto Mezzi. Uh, let me get here with Joan and see what she's got going. And we're just getting ready to leave. And Joan. Yay, Auto Mezzi. Okay, that's it. We're on our way. We'll, we'll send another quick one when we get to uh, the next person's house. We're in our Lamborghinis. Drew with Joan, and we're going to be the Lamborghini crowd driving over to Auto Mezzi. Drew, what do you got to say? Yep, we're going to take our two gated manual 2003 Mercies and uh, have a great time celebrating the 30th anniversary of Auto Mezzi. Great. Okay, let's hear this car start. Drew, get yours running. Here we go. That's the way a Lamborghini is supposed to run. 
And so there you have it. You get a sense of what we're going to see out here today. Some of the amazing cars from Ferrari of Denver and from some local collectors too. But let's talk more about why we're out here today. And that is to raise money to support a great Colorado-based charity. And that is Caruso Family Charities. Joined again here by Jerry Caruso. This is your brainchild, Jerry. Let's talk about it. You started Caruso Family Charities how long ago and why did you start it? Jeremy, we started back in, uh, well, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for picking our charity. We're honored that uh, Otto Metzi chose Caruso Family Charities. Kind of makes my Ford Frontier not, look not too good when I see these cars. But anyway, Jeremy, uh, 2006, my wife and I decided to start a foundation and uh, really didn't know what we were going to even give to. And we settled on helping uh, families uh, who have a child with a terminal or life-threatening illness. And it's worked out unbelievable. We're in our 14th year. We've helped over 900 families and we get our families from social workers all throughout the state. We get the poorest of the poor yeah. and they have a you know single mother or a family that have a child who's either dying, terminal mm -hmm. or life threatening. And we go in and we help. We pay bills, repair houses and cars and buy tires and get that family back on their feet again. These are parents who are laser focused on the well-being of their child. They don't have time to worry about the day-to-day -day stuff that you can help That's with. That's absolutely correct. It's families that should have two incomes yeah. and they end up with one because mother has to stay home. Yeah. Uh, and so they just spiral out of control financially. Yeah. And that's what we try to do is get them back on their feet uh, try and help them through the through the rough times. Yeah, we're out here celebrating all things Italian and our love for all things Italian. This is a uniquely Italian thing for you, I know. You grew up with a strong sense of family, togetherness, and helping people out, right? And that's yeah. sort of at the root of what you guys are doing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we're um, uh, our families are uh, native of Colorado. I've been here my whole life. My mother, father, uh, always helping the poor, always helping the needy, and so I grew up with that. Yeah. And uh, we're just trying to carry on their legacy, and it's. Uh, yeah, we're, we're very blessed and honored and to be able to have so many Italian friends that help us yeah. and uh, be able to give back. It's an amazing legacy and you're about to see some of the work they do in action. Let's take a look at this video of Caruso Family Charities in action. Eighteen, what is it? Eighteen ten, right here. Eighteen ten. Shia, hi sweetie, I'm Jerry. Can you say hi? God, you're so pretty. When we first started the charity, not really even knowing what we were gonna to give to. I was referred to a doctor by the name of Dr. Tom Smith who treated pediatric cancer. And his recommendation to us was mothers and fathers of sick children. And so that was kind of the impetus that kind of hit me uh, right on the spot. So the hospice nurse just left? She just left, yeah. Shia, um can go any day. Yeah. She was supposed to go last month and I couldn't do it. I called 911 and they came and got her, took her to Longmont United, flight to Lightened her to Children's. And um, I'm glad she's still here right now. The cost um, to take care of the sick child is astronomical. They don't want their child to pass and they don't want their child to suffer. And so they're focused on that and they're not focused on making sure the rent is paid or there's food on the table. I know your rent is probably your biggest expense. Would be my guess. It's right important now. for us to visit the family personally. I want to see all the surroundings so I know how much we have to help them. They typically assume that we're going to say, well, let us give you a $100 grocery gift card or um, a gas card, but that's not what we do. What we'd like to do okay. to start with is pay a year of your rent. 
one year. <laughs> We'd like to, to pay your dad $4,800 and not have you worry about another payment. Thank you. For a year. Thank you. That'll help you. Another big thing for us, siblings. And so we'd like to help do something with him. And I know that he's into boxing. Yes. Right? Yes. And is he taking boxing lessons? Yes. And at the YMCA. At the YMCA. Okay. I'd like to commit six months, okay. which would be uh, 360 bucks. Ready? Here you go. I'm giving you this. Can I give you guys a hug? Yes, yes. you can give us a yes. hug. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. You're more than welcome. It's our pleasure. Days that we go on family visits are always emotional for me. It just makes me want to work harder and do more so that we can help more families. Aww. Am I included that, or do yes. I not? Yes. I get you one or am I out? Together. You are <laughs> included. 13 years later, it is my reason for existence. I love it. Bye, Pam. Bye. Thank you. Say bye, Dolly. <laughs> nice to see you, honey. Giving is so important to me. I believe it's the essence of happiness. I just want to be able to help these families and be their light and, and help them get back on their feet. Hi there, I am thrilled to be here today. This is gonna to be a fantastic event. We've got some beautiful cars and it's for a fantastic cause. I'm your host, Rachel Elena. We're gonna start with some Fiat, but first, let's take a look at that trivia question. All right, and the show begins with the 1985 Fiat Baritone. It's an X19, and the owner is Tish Gantz. Tish was the previous Automezzi director. She also designed the posters, I've been told. Next, we have the 1980 Fiat Spider. Owner, Ron Southworth. Look at those stripes. And if you can see the detail work on the side, I see some Snoopy, some Beatles, Super cool little car we've got here. Nice. The 1976 Fiat 124 Spider. Owner, Michael Whitehouse. Here we have the 1978 Fiat 124 Spider. Owner, Spency Flournay. This car was purchased in 2001 after they saw it at the Automezzi. It has 23,500 miles, stock, meaning it's all original, and it has been meticulously maintained. It was last year's runner-up in the Fiat division. This, I believe, was the Automezzi winner last year. It's the 1983 Fiat Pinafarina Azura Spider 2000, and the owner is Cindy Anderson. Vote for your favorite car and support CFC. It's a great cause. All right, here comes our trivia answer. It's coming up next. But first, I want to remind you again to donate to the Caruso Family Charities and tag your favorites.
All right, here we are with uh, one of the people responsible for putting this all together today, Stephen Wisco from Ferrari of Denver. Why is this something Ferrari of Denver wants to be involved with? Um, it's been a tough year um, with uh, car shows, different nonprofits, finding creative ways, and uh, instead of just canceling Auto Mezzi in its 30th year, um, we thought it'd be fun to take it live, do a live broadcast. I mean, Ferrari of Denver has been uh, supporting Auto Mezzi since the beginning. So it's, uh, it's something that we're passionate about. It's kind of our, our, our biggest car show of Italian motoring in celebration of our cars and other cars. So it's just overall fun. So we wanted to see what we could do. Italian sports cars are kind of your life. For those who don't get it, what, what is so amazing about these pieces of machinery? I mean, everything is a, it's a rolling piece of art. I mean, the, uh, you know, our store, obviously, we're a business. Ferrari of Denver is a business, but at the same time, we're almost a museum. And uh, we're in charge of, you know, embracing people's enthusiasm. And, uh, you know, when moms bring their kids before hockey and soccer practice, or dads come in and want to spend some time with their kids, I mean, we're kind of ambassadors of the brand to just continue that dream and to get young people excited. I mean, if you come in and you're eight years old and you see your first Ferrari and we let you sit in it and you fire it up, you know, <laughs> ideally that's the car um, you're going to continue to think about. You talk about these being pieces of art. I was in the showroom the other day. You have one car that's worth $4.6 million in Correct. there. Correct. Yeah, we do have a 2017 Ferrari La Ferrari in our showroom. It's as the Automezzi Director's Cup. So last year's winner yeah. of this car show is for sale at Ferrari of Denver for 4.6. <laughs> So yeah, if you've got that sitting around, just hop on by. Stephen would be happy to take care uh, of you. Monday, but. we can't sell cars on Sunday, so <laughs> love to see you tomorrow. That's right. All right, Stephen, thanks All so right, much. Thank for you, this. guys. Rachel, will send it back to you. As sometimes happens, Scott couldn't be here. So instead, we're gonna take a quick look at his Lancias. The 2017 Ferrari F12 TDF is a performance monster. That's because it hails from a rich lineage of front engine, naturally aspirated V12s and was designed as a track car to pay homage to the Tour de France, the legendary automobile road race of the 1950s and 60s. Being one of just 799 examples with only 230 produced for the United States, this rare, Sleek Ferrari is valued at $900,000. As an absolute stunner in both looks and handling, this is one high performance vehicle. Climbing from zero to 60 in just 2.7 seconds and reaching 124 miles per hour in 7.9 seconds, the F12 TDF commands attention. Its 12 cylinder motor and 780 horsepower engine top speeds of 211 miles per hour. With 520 pounds of torque, killer looks and maximum performance, it's no wonder we're thrilled to have this beauty rocking the Auto Metsy lawn. I am excited to see these De Tommaso Panteras. First, let's look at our trivia question.
And here comes an early model serial number 1412. This guy's a work in progress, but he's still pretty sleek and cool. Next up, we have the 1972 Day Tommaso Pantera with owner Dave Hall. Wow, if the sound of this car doesn't turn your head, the color will catch your eye. This car will be featured in just a few minutes so you can learn more. Look at this one. Coming up here, we have a 1972 Day Tommaso Pantera, owner Jeff Nicholson. This beautiful one is a 1972 Day Tommaso Pantera with owner Aaron Axelrod. The next car headed our way is clearly ready for action. It is a 1973 Day Tommaso Pantera GTS. Owner, Glenn Mer Merici. Merica, Glenn Merica. And now, let's see if we can find that answer to that trivia question. There's so many great Italian sports car clubs represented here today, Fiat, Ferrari, others too, and they're on display proudly showing off these cars that they've spent years and thousands uh, restoring and, and getting set for this event. As we said, this is the 30th year for Auto Metsi, the first one ever quite like this. There was a lot of talk about whether we should have this event or not, but Gina, who loves this event, really wanted to go through with it, and so we really worked with the Jefferson County Health Department to make this happen. Everybody who's on site, and there are very few people, are wearing masks and they are being prepared uh, to keep social distance as they uh, come out here and admire these cars in person. But we're lucky to have you all at home watching from the comfort of your couch as you take in these Italian sports cars and help our charity today. It is uh, Caruso Family Charities. It's a great Italian charity right here based in Denver. They help families in need, the parents of young children who are terminally ill, help them pay the bills, pay the rent, uh, make a car payment, whatever it takes uh, to get things going. Uh, for sure. We are awaiting Jeff here. He is getting his picture taken right now in front of the uh, Step and Repeat, which has a lovely shot of the Roman Coliseum. And uh, he'll be joining us right here as soon as he gets that photo taken. Uh, so uh, thanks for uh, waiting with me here as we get ready to interview Jeff. He's got his mask on too, sitting alone in his car. That shows you how attentive we are all to what's going on here today. Uh, come on up here. He's going to pull right up and then we're going to have him come to the microphone. Step right up to the microphone and let's talk about your car and your love for Italian motoring. Okay, well this is a 1972. It's been customized. It has GTS flares, uh, front hair dam, extensive remodification of the front. It uh, has the molded in rear wing. Uh, it's a 351 Cleveland. Uh, we always loved the style of the car. Uh, you know, it just just a lot of fun. The engine's, of course, midship, so it's a little different handling and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So Why this car, though? Of all the gorgeous Italian sports cars over the years, why is this the one for you? Uh, it, it either strikes you or it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, the first one I saw was I was a senior in high school, and I didn't even know what one was. Yeah. And I jumped a fence to go look at it <laughs> at the airport, which now you'd get shot for. But uh, uh, I, that's the only time I think I've ever left a note on a car. I said, I don't know what it is, but I plan on having one. And it took me about 30 years to get one. But uh, so it, it just it just kind of snaps at you or it doesn't. So. Yeah. Well, it's a beautiful piece of machinery. Thank, Thank you, you for coming out here to show you it bet. off today. We'll let you get back in and we'll be right back after this. Back live here at Auto Medzi 30 at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds here in Jefferson County, Colorado. 
uh, uh, pardon the hum of the loud Italian sports car behind me. Hopefully, I'll yell a little bit because we have to keep our distance too. Uh, but I am joined right now, I want to get it right, Janet Lombardi and Vince Franchotti. Francescotti. Francescotti. I knew I'd get it wrong. I'm that's sorry. Tough one. Get real close to the mics there if you can, and I know that's tough with social Hi distance. There. But Hi tell there. me, you are guy. You guys are with IABA. What is that, and what are you doing out here today? Um, the IABA stands for the Italian American Business Association, and we are a group of um, business owners in the Denver metro area. And we get together. It's kind of like a, um, a chamber of commerce, if you will. And so we get together and we support our communities and our businesses. And if you're uh, Italian-owned business, that's wonderful. If you're not Italian, but you like what we stand for, then we, we let everybody come and join. Great. And what are the more prominent Italian businesses in Denver that we should know about? Oh, my goodness. Uh, what it what I, I I don't even know where to start. I mean we have a <laughs> good one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm um, guessing Jerry Caruso's one. Well, Jerry Caruso is a member. Yeah. Gina that has get connected events here. She's a member. Yeah. Vince Francescotti is also a member. Yeah. Uh, so we're we're everything from accountants to um, automobile. Yeah. Uh, in industry, hair industry, so we have all across the board. Yeah. Vince? Vince, step up to the mic there and tell us about your business and, and why you think it's so important to promote uh, a fellow Italian business owners here. Get real close sure. to the mic there. No, uh, I'm an independent auto broker for Centennial Leasing and Sales, um, and I joined the club just to get connected a little bit more with my Italian heritage and with the local Italian community around town and support each other's businesses and and just get to know everybody. We have a great time. We support events like this because most of the people here are, are members of our club and we just help each other out. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. So Autometsi, is this your first year involved or have you guys been Second involved? Year. Second year. Second okay. year. Okay. We'd like to we'd like to be able to do it differently. This is the yeah. way we had to do it this year, yeah. but it shows you that uh, necessity is the mother of invention right. and you improvise, right? Yeah. You find a way to make it happen. It was still a good way to try to get these cars in front of everybody because these yeah. are spectacular, these cars. They are sure are. Yeah, right, fun. right. Yeah. And it's great for all the Italians to get together because yeah. we are Loving Italians. <laughs> we love all things Italian, for sure. Thank you guys so much you for bet. being here today. And Thanks, as you Jeremy. step out, of course, good to see you again. Yeah, and as you step out, we're going to have Tish pop right in here, uh, fresh out of her Fiat. Tish, step up to the mic here, and I'm going to lower it just a little bit for you. That's right. And it's then, short. Yeah, that's all right. Believe me, I can relate. So tell me about your car, your club, and why you are part of Autometsi. So this is a 1985. Bertone X19, known as the last affordable Ferrari. It is a mid-engine 1500 non-interference motor that is fuel injected. Uh, they're not super fast, but they are super fun. They handle like all get out. So very desirable, very fun. I happen to be the second owner on this one. Wow. Um, and it is known as the Espresso for some odd reason due to its color. I can't imagine why you <laughs> came up with that nickname. Why was this the right car for you? Uh, you know, I actually didn't know it was the right car for me. Uh, Tom Dodder of Aspen Import Auto and I were friends for years. And I have a 1975 Fiat Spider as well. Mm -hmm. And he was like, when I had the Spider, he's like, you need an X. So he took me out and I had me drive this. And I'm like, crap, mm -hmm. I need an X. And so I bought this one. I'm the second owner. Um, and getting it from the original owner was spectacular. So I have all the records and I know all the history and That's cool. stuff. So I am a definite Fiat aficionado and proud to be the current organizer of the Rocky Mountain Fiat Lancia Club, which has now been around over 30 years. Um, Tom was actually one of the initial founding members of the Autometsi way, way back in the day. Yeah. So to be able to continue to do this and, and, and hang out with everyone and keep this going and the fact that autos are awesome yeah. is great. It feels like Fiat had this resurgent in, uh, resurgence in recent years. Do you yeah. feel like people have sort of redeveloped this love for the car? Yeah, I think so because uh, a lot of the more expensive exotics are just out of reach for the commoner yeah. and Fiats aren't. You mm -hmm. can still own one and have a lot of fun with them and they can be original, they can be modified and they're real easy to work on. I do my own work. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're just great cars and I think people are really starting to have more of an appreciation for them than they did early on. Um, and that's a pretty obvious from everybody that came out today. It's like, hey, check out the Fiat. So. Is there an inferior complex with this car? Do you feel like most oh, no. people think Ferrari, Lamborghini when they think Italian sports No, cars? the whiplash effect is still very, very high on yeah. these cars. I'll so bet, yeah. People stop by it. People yell at me all the time on the street, wonderful car. So, yeah, I don't think that just because it doesn't cost six figures doesn't mean <laughs> that it doesn't have a six-figure stance. If people have a Fiat or want one, how do they get in touch with you? Oh, uh, you can find us uh, either on the Facebooks or on Meetup. 
Uh, and we're the Rocky Mountain Fiat Lancia Club. Yeah. So RMFLC. Uh, and, or you can actually just uh, send a email directly and that's rmflcdenver at gmail.com. Perfect. We'll get you going. Is this Ron right here? This is Ron. Okay, yeah. we're going to have Ron pull on up here while we let you get out of here with your gorgeous espresso colored car. Thank Thanks you. for sharing it with it's us. Wonderful to be here. And sharing your love of Fiat's with us for, day, uh, for, sure, for sure today Thanks as well. For Appreciate it, Tish. Uh, have a good one. Ron, we're going to have you pull right on up here. This is a gorgeous sports car that you're about to see uh, as we continue live here from Automezzi 30 at the Jefferson County Fairgrounds. Come on over here, Ron, and we'll have you step out of this gorgeous piece of machinery and up to the mic. Uh, all right, come on up here, Ron. Gorgeous, gorgeous car with a nice Snoopy theme to it. I like it. Oh, Hop on up there. Submarine theme. There, oh, good. There you go. Very good. Hop on up there. Tell us who you are and tell us about this car. Good morning. I'm Ron Southworth. This is my 1980 Fiat Spider, the 50th anniversary model that I have decorated as a nautical theme or the Beatles Yellow Submarine. Big fan of the Beatles, are Big you? Big fan of the Beatles. <laughs> that album, especially. It's a good one. This it one, is a good yeah. one. <laughs> uh, so tell me, what's so special about this car? What, what makes it better than the others? I don't say I'd compare one to the other, apples and oranges, but I love these cars because they're affordable, yeah. they're fun, and you can have fun with them. You can dress them up however you want. And quite honestly, I found this for free on Craigslist. <laughs> You're kidding. Did a few, uh, watch a few videos on YouTube and did all the body work and paint myself. And it's just been a delight to work on. Well, that's good to know because I think people think Italian sports car, they think I can't afford that. But there are ways that you can make it happen. Yep. Yeah. And mechanically, haven't had to do a thing to it. It's 40 years old and it still purrs like a kitten. How many miles? Uh, it, Odometer reads 90,000, but it may have rolled over once or twice. <laughs> once or twice, that's all, for sure. It's a gorgeous car, and we're Thank glad you. that you shared it with us today. Oh. It shows a lot of spunk and personality, and it's just one of many out here that we're having fun looking oh, at. It's always wonderful to come out here and see all, the, it's all cool. the fun toys. Well, thanks for being here. I love the mask, too, by the way. Made it myself. Thank you uh, Very cool, Ron. Thanks so much. Uh, again, here's a look at uh, Ron and his Fiat as they drive away as we uh, exit the Fiat phase of this car show today, and uh, we send it right back to Rachel. Rachel? All right, let's head into our trivia question. Now, I'm super excited about these cars. These are classics.
the answer to that trivia question is. Back live over here on the west edge of the Jefferson County Fairgrounds talk, uh, grounds, talking all things Italian sports cars, Ferrari specifically at the moment. And I've got Dave Hall with me here, and you've got this gorgeous Pantera. Get close to the mic there if you can, and tell me why this is the car for you. Well, I fell in love with uh, Panteras back in 1978, yeah. and I bought my first Pantera there. This is my second car, yeah. and I sort of wanted to build a one-off show car. Yeah. And I already had a lot of experience building my 78, or my, it was a 71, and this happens to be a 73 car. Yeah. But I did a lot of work in terms of flaring the wheel wells, putting bigger tires on it, um, more productive rims, a bigger motor. We did a lot of electronics on this car. Yeah. So it's got the older cars pulled a lot of power, and these cars use the new LED technology. Yeah. So the lights are brighter, my parking brakes are lighter. They have new uh, digital, uh, turn signals that uh, we get from Pantera Performance. This is a hobby that is not cheap. Why, why, why this thing to spend your time with? Well, I tell you, I fell in love with Pantera's primarily because it had a Ford motor. Okay. So it was a sports car built in Modena, Italy, along with Ferraris and Lamborghinis, yeah. but it had a Ford powertrain. So it was very easy to work on the car myself when I was younger. Yeah. And of course, now I can take it to any Ford dealer and buy parts for it, get it fixed. So it was very easy to tune up. Yeah. So for me, it was the perfect sports car and it had the look of an Italian beauty. It does. It's got a mid-engine. It's got a German ZF transaxle. So Ford had a great idea back then with a mid-engine car. Yeah. They actually tried to do it with a, a Mustang yeah. and didn't do very well. It was just built a couple of one-up cars but then they got with De Tommaso and built this Pantera, yeah. which is just a beautiful car. It is gorgeous, and I uh, love the color too. I can see why you enjoy it so much. And this is one of two you have, right? This is one of two I have. The other one's black, Okay. and it's sort of my high performance car. It's got a 550 horsepower. Yeah. This one's just 450, yeah. but it's more of a touring car. I don't get out and hammer this car too much. No, too bad. I'll, get, yeah. I'll bet you get a lot of looks, though. But I do get a lot of looks. <laughs> it's yeah. gorgeous. Dave, we'll let you get back in it and hop away from here. But thanks so much for sharing your okay. car with us. Thank really you. Good talking it. to you. I want to bring in Jeff McEachern here while you drive off here. Jeff, we were supposed to talk to you earlier, sure. and I actually accidentally called somebody else Jeff McEachern. So there hey, are not two, two of, of you. Here today. Okay, well, if so, Four that is a huge coincidence. Uh, tell me, you are with Denver Auto Shield. Yes, What's your role out here today, and what do you guys do for car owners like this? Sure, absolutely. We, we really play into helping these, these enthusiasts enjoy the cars they care about. Uh, we protect the finishes from rock chips, environmental impact, scratches. Uh, we do that with paint protection films, ceramic coatings, some real high level enthusiast detailing. Um, and it really lets you go play with this car without ruining uh, the finish or, or kind of getting out of the throttle or getting too far behind your buddy, uh, you know, knowing that these uh, paint surfaces are well protected playing with the car in that way. So you give peace of mind because exactly. I, if I spend, uh, I mean, there's a car, there's sure. a Ferrari that costs $4.6 million. Sure. If I spend that kind of money, I'm worried about driving. Absolutely. It, right? Yeah, absolutely. So it's this... exactly that. Protect that investment and have more fun using it. Yeah. Are a lot of the cars you see here today clients of yours? Quite a few. Quite a few. Yeah. yeah. We work very closely with uh, Ferrari of Denver. We've uh, been, uh, this is probably our fourth Auto Metsy. Uh, so it is really that. Come out and see the people we do business with in a, in a social uh, setting. Talk cars a bit and have some fun. But I'm guessing I don't have, I mean, I have a Toyota. Sure. I could I could come see you too, right? Absolutely. And you'd be surprised, <laughs> man. We get everything from Kias up to the $4.6 million Ferraris. Anything uh, people care about in that way, we're happy to contribute to. All right. Jeff McHecker in Denver, Auto Shield. Thank you, Thanks sir. so much for being Absolutely, a part of this man. event every year. Have a great day. And helping to raise money uh, for Caruso Family Charities. That's the purpose of being out here for Auto Metsy 30 today.
luxury and legendary. This beautiful 1964 Maserati Sebring, it's gorgeous red, brings back memories and times of another era, is owned by Steve Watson. There's only 36,000 miles on this car. It was highly original, never restored, and I'm told this car was designed for sporting industrialists and playboys. The interior includes a special compartment to hold a briefcase or tennis racket. It is the 1974 Maserati Bora. Owner, Andrew Katz. Looks like something from a James Bond movie. You can see the engine from the outside. Coming up next, we have the 2005 Maserati Cambio Course. It's a coupe, and the owner is Jason Duffy. Beautiful Cambio Corsa. This next car is a little more modern and ready for action. It is a 2017 Maserati Gran Turismo. Owner, Larry Dardano. What a sleek machine that is. This next one is fast and beautifully engineered. It's a 2017 Maserati Levante. The owners are Larry Dardano and Jessica Hernandez. Coming up next, nobody loved this car until Cruella purchased it in 2017. I've heard she's been putting love and money into her Italian lover with no complaints. This is a 2003 Merati Cambio Corsa Spider. Owner, Corella Green. Now, are you ready for the trivia answer? Let's check it out. Inspirational, handcrafted, and ultra luxurious. It's one of only 499 ever made. And this hybrid piece of awesomeness goes from zero to 60 in under three seconds. Ferrari's 2015 La Ferrari Hybrid Supercar is absolutely gasworthy. With its added electric motor, Ferrari's hybrid supercar generates a grand total of 949 horsepower. Topping out at 217 miles per hour, this naturally aspirated V12 beauty is not only powerful, but its electric power assist means no lag. Hit the throttle and the La Ferrari responds with full acceleration in one tenth of a second. Handmade with adjustable aerodynamics, this spectacular, sleek super vehicle is valued at over $2 million and has graced the Automet Ceylon on several occasions. All right, you are in for a real treat today. A car that has not left the confines of a garage in 38 years. Is that right, Ken? That's correct. Today is the first day this is making its public debut in nearly four decades. Yes. So I'm with Karen McGowan, owner of this 1958, right? Yes. What model is this? It's, it's a 1958 Alfa Romeo Giulietta Spider Veloci. Got kind it. Kind of a mouthful. Got it. Are we having audio problems? Are we good? Uh, I'm seeing audio on the camera. All right. Can you, are we good? Okay, I think we're having an audio problem. Do, can we hear Karen? 
All right, well, let's just keep talking if we can. Um, so, 1958, you bought it what year? I bought it in 1964. Wow. Why was this the car you wanted to get? Actually, my dad bought a 58 Alfa Male brand new, and I had a another car, kind of a hot rod stuff, and I just decided I needed an Alfa, yeah. and I've been into Alphas ever since. This is my first Alfa, but I've probably owned, I don't know, 100 plus Alfa Males. Wow. I used to own a shop where I worked on Alfa Males. Yeah. And I own a 1967 Duetto race car that was one of three cars used to film the movie The Graduate. How about that? Wow. It's in the garage. I can't bring two cars that need trailers. Did Dustin Hoffman drive it? Yes. Wow. How about that? So this car was destroyed in a fire. Yes, it was. And 38 years ago, I was driving on a road and the, the part broke and it cut through the brake lines and the fuel lines and flames are coming up through the interior of the car and after a while I had no brakes and it was just kind of a mess and by the time I got it stopped it was fully engulfed and the El Dorado Springs Fire Department came out and uh, they were unsuccessful in putting it out <laughs> and then the Boulder Fire Department came out and they put it out. Wow. Well, so you got it restored after all that. I mean, that must make it even sweeter to bring it out here today. It is. Yeah. It is. It, it's, it's, uh, I'm, I'm extremely happy that it's here today. I'm guessing you don't want anybody touching it, though. Pretty much. Okay, I'll keep my hands <laughs> off. Karen, thank you so much for right. bringing this beauty out for us. Thank you. And thanks for being here today. All right. What thank a gorgeous you. car. All right, we'll let, we'll let you get away. We're going to bring in Sandro now. Okay, thank you. Sandro Marcantoni. Thank you, Karen. Really appreciate it. Gorgeous car. We still good? Okay, we're, we're having some technical difficulties, but we're trying to work around those as we uh, let Karen drive away. We're bringing Sandro Marcantonio now uh, with his gorgeous Alfa Romeo. Got it started after 38 years. Pretty impressive. All right, Sandro, Parker right there. There you go. We're getting a little far away, but that's all right. We can make it work. And uh, come on up here and let's talk about this beauty. Well, you, you're uh, hobbling along today, aren't you? Uh, sorry about that. I'm going to lower this for you a little bit. Get okay, real close cool. there, especially with the mask. And Sandro, tell me about this car and why it's so important to you. So I actually bought this car when I was 16 years old. So I had this car in high school. So I've had it for 27 years now. So. Wow. How much work have you put into it? Well, I've rebuilt the entire car from yeah. the engine to the paint body to the interior. Yeah. A lot of us love our old high school cars. Why is this one so important to you? It was just kind of a really rare car. They only made 893 of these cars in the United States. Yeah. So it's one of, you know, 800. And there's probably only about 200 of these cars left. Wow. In the United States. So. Wow. It's so, just fun to show it off, you know, once a year here at Auto Medzi. Yeah. Get a little closer if you don't mind. I hate to ask, but I will anyway. If you had to put a dollar figure on how much you've sunk into this puppy, what do you uh, think? Probably this? at least $50,000. Really? Wow. Over the years. But it's all about loving the car, really, it's right? It's all about loving the car and the passion that Alfa Romeo gives you. And, yeah. And also the good camaraderie with all these nice people that are involved in the Italian car yeah. clubs. Why is the Italian car culture such a tight-knit group? And why do people love these things so much? I think because Italians are very passionate people and it kind of spills over into the cars and yeah. it's just kind of a fun atmosphere. Yeah. You know, in Italy, you... Um, you love to live your life in the fast lane. It's just the way that it spills over into everything they do. Yeah. Well, so. some people call these works of art. I'm sure you would agree with that, right? Definitely, yeah. I mean, it's not the... Nobody's going to confuse it with anything else, that's for sure. For sure. I'll bet you get a lot of looks. It's a gorgeous car. Sandro, thanks so much Thank for joining much. us today. Thank we'll you. let you take off in this beauty right here. And uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll send it back over to Rachel. Let's see what our trivia question is this time. I am excited about these performance-inspired, very cool vehicles. These are our two-wheeled Amici. Coming up first, we have a 2017 Moto Guzzi V9 Roamer. Owner, Daniel Lowitz. This is a 2019 Apria Tuano V4 1100RR. Owner, Alan Edwards. 
Oh, that thing looks like it goes fast quickly. <laughs> Who is that furry friend in the sidecar? What a beauty. Both the bike and the dog. This is a 1980 Vespa P200E sidecar. Owner, Ryan Borman. Now let's check out some of the amazing bikes that we had at the Auto Metsi over the years. Hear that engine roar. Life just got a little more breathtaking. That's because the 2008 Desmos Adichie RR hits zero to 60 in less than three seconds. And it's the first four cylinder motorcycle that's a replica of Ducati's MotoGP race bike. This one is number 894 of only 1500 made in the world. Armed with 197 horsepower, the Desmos Adichie boasts a power to weight ratio of 2.0 to one pounds per horsepower. A thumbing of the start button snaps the one liter DOHC 16 valve V4 engine to life. And at $72,500, the 2008 Ducati Desmos Adici RR is more than static art. The real art is in the speed and beauty of the way it rides. We are with the Exeterinis. This is for the extra guests at the event. I'm interested in checking these cars out. They're a little bit different, but still super cool. This first up is a 1987 Cadillac Alante. Owner, Jeffrey Prince. Awesome. This 2000 Aston Martin DB7 Vantage is owned by Robert Stafford. Tan interior, beautiful paint. You can see that cruising along the Southern California coast. All right, and let's see what's going on over there with Jeremy. Thank you for enduring our technical difficulties. We are back live here, and it's hard to talk about all things Italian and our love for all things Italian without talking about wine, too, which is why we brought in Absolutely. Paul Bonacquisti uh, with the Bonacquisti Wine Company here. Paul, tell me uh, about your company and why you're a part of this big event. Well, we're, um, uh, we're an urban winery located in Denver at I-70 in Pecos. We've been around for 14 years this yeah. year, yeah. and uh, we're part of this event because uh, we, we're 
just happy to help out with uh, the, the charity yeah. and with Caruso families. So We've been talking a lot about how coronavirus has changed everything. It certainly has changed this show versus what it used to be. How has it changed things for you guys? How are you getting through this? Oh, uh, we're, uh, <laughs> it's crazy because uh, we, we do a lot of live music and, uh, and of course, private events and, and all, that's, all that's gone right now. So we, we've just uh, learned to uh, do more online sales and push out more online content to uh, just to, uh, especially to our customer base already yeah. and, and do some fun things. So. Al alcohol is fairly recession proof, right? That's, that's a good business to be in at this time, <laughs> right? They always, it's, uh, that's <laughs> the common <laughs> thought about wine, but yes, we all, but it's still, we have to, we need to drive traffic yeah. to our location and, and onto our website to, to get them to buy wine. So. Well, let's talk about that. Where is your location? What's your website? Where can we get your wine? We're at 46th and Pecos, just a block south of I-70. We're located in Sunnyside neighborhood, the north side, as uh, we like to call it. And uh, our website's Bonacquisti Wine Dot com, and there's also a discount code AutoMetsy. If you use that uh, now through Labor Day, 15% off your first order. We're offering uh, $10 uh, flat FedEx ground on two bottles or more, so take advantage of that. For sure, a great deal. Paul, thank you so much for joining Welcome. us today. Thanks, really sir. appreciate it. We're going to bring in Steve. Hey, Steve, if you can pop on over right here. Welcome. We're going to talk about this gorgeous, Paul had this gorgeous backdrop that uh, sadly is not his own car. He t drives an old Jeep, he told me, but Steve drives this car. Get real close to the mic there if you can, Steve, and okay. tell us about this beauty that's behind us. Uh, 1964 Maserati Sebring, yeah. uh, American model. It was delivered to St. Louis in the beginning. Yeah. I've owned it since uh, 2013, I think. Wow. Why was this the right car for you? I've been looking at it for a long time. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. How much have you put into it, do you suppose? I'm just talking about money and labor. Uh, well, the engine blew up uh, the second time I drove it. So we did the engine, the transmission, got it back on the road for summer, and then I sent it back for uh, steering and suspension. So money, you really want to know? <laughs> I'd love to know, but if you don't want to share it, you don't have to. <laughs> Probably $45,000 after buying it. Somebody, somebody told me this might be for sale. Is that it right? It is for sale. Yeah. Oh wow. So how do how does somebody get their hands on this? And why are you getting rid of it? Uh, well, at first I made a website for the car. It's uh, classicmaseratiforsale.com, so you can look at it there. And uh, I don't know. I've had it long enough. I'm ready to move on, simplify my life. I've got other cars in the garage that I'm working on. Um, your love has not died at all, but you're ready to share it with somebody else. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful car. And it's it a is ton of fun to drive. It's gorgeous. I'll bet you get a million looks when you're driving down the road. For sure. For yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, we'll let you pull on out of here. Steve, thanks so much for sharing it. And Thank what's you. that website again? ClassicMaseratiForSale.com. ClassicMaseratiForSale.com. We'll let you get on out of here. We're going to let these guys pull on up as we go live, and we're going to share one more Maserati with you here before we send it back to Rachel. This is Jason Duffy's Maserati. We're going to get him in here real quick. Hang tight real quick. Um, yep, come on in here, sorry. Uh, thank you for playing along with us here as we move these cars in and out here. Not a big crowd here today of people, but plenty of cars to help navigate around. Hop on out here, Jason, and we're gonna talk about this beauty uh, right here, Maserati. Jason, get right up there to the microphone if you don't mind, get real close so we can hear you. And uh, tell me your name and tell me about this beautiful car. Hi, my name's Jason Duffy. Uh, it's a 2005 uh, Maserati, can be a Corsa. Okay, so got it. So it's got the uh, fancy transmission for uh, shifting on it. Of all the Maseratis, why was this the one you wanted? Uh, this is the one I like because of the. Uh, it's got the F1 type transmission, so it's uh, very similar to the, the way you shift. Uh, this particular one, I like the colors, the black, yeah. the chrome tire or the chrome wheels. Yeah. So, get a lot of looks when you get a lot of looks. It's an amazing car. It's, Just yeah, every time you pull it out of the garage. Yeah, and I'll bet you're reluctant to pull it out of the garage, aren't you? Uh, no, actually, I, I try this one quite a bit. So. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why is it the Maserati? Yeah, I think when we think Italian sports car, we think uh, Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati. Why is this sort of that upper echelon car? Uh, I think part of it is just the names. Yeah. yeah. Anything that ends in I, right, it's going to be a good thing. And yeah. uh, I think the sound of them, uh, just the prestige that brings uh, whenever you get outside, right? You can be beside three Corvettes and uh, everybody's going to look at the Maserati or the Ferrari. So it's, it's the way to go. When you see all these other beautiful cars out here, does it make you Jones to get another one of these or, a, or, <laughs> or an older one? Yeah. Definitely, especially uh, maybe a little newer model, but yeah. uh, either that or one of the old ones. So yeah. it, uh, it, they're just awesome cars. For it's sure. a great community. Uh, yeah. The Maserati Club here is, we've had a great time the last 20 plus years and, and uh, it's been really fun. Uh, we've heard that a lot, this talk about community. Why, why do people get together and share this love of these Italian cars? Uh, I don't know. I think it's just the com com camaraderie, uh, 
good wine, good cars, <laughs> good driving. Uh, yeah, the little rallies we do all the time, it's just great. Yeah, good life. Yeah, for it's sure. fun. Beautiful car, Jason. Fun. Thanks so much for sharing it with thanks us for today. Time. Love it. All right, we're going to let him pull out of here. You make, make sure you make a real loud noise when you leave, <laughs> all right? Because we've heard so much about how noisy this car can be. Here it is. Let's listen to it as he drives off here. Let's see if it's louder than a Corvette. All right, Jason, let's hear this bad boy. Yeah, I'd say so. Well done, Jason. <laughs> thanks so much. Uh, all right, we're going to send it back to Rachel now. Rachel. Let's check out these performance-driven cars. Here we have coming a 2017 Lamborghini Huracan Spider Dash 4S. The owner is Michael Chisholm. Beautiful, so sleek. Hear that power. Coming up next is a 2003 Lamborghini Musialago. Owner, Bob Cloyder. This car is elegant. Here we have a beautifully engineered 2003 Lamborghini Musialaga. Owner Andrew Racevit. That's one fast car. Wow, the color on this next car is beautiful. This car can go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 4.1 seconds and has a top speed of 196 miles per hour. Manufactured in St. Augusta, Bolognese, Italy. This car is one of 14,022 Lamborghini Gallardos produced worldwide from 2003 to 2013. It's a 2008 Lamborghini Gallardo Coupe, owned by Pete Rigaldo. This black vehicle is a 2015 Lamborghini Huracan. Owner Nick Arguello. Ah, hear that engine roar. It's distinctive, yet I have a feeling that this car can go pretty fast. <laughs> And finally, we have the 2017 Lamborghini Huracan Spider. Owner, Dean Dowson. Unparalleled, beautiful color. It's got like a gold, sparkly, shimmery beauty to it. Now, let's see if we can find out what the answer is to that trivia question. What was the last experience you were immersed in? An experience with family and friends. An experience that took your breath away. How about the experience that you couldn't wait to share? Quality Audio Video provides custom, handcrafted, high quality technology for people looking to enhance the way they experience life while creating moments meant for sharing. Technology that enhances your environment. Technology that entertains for their enjoyment and yours, with friends or alone. Technology that provides security and comfort. Life is better with QAV. Custom tailor your next experience today. Back live here on the uh, west edge of the Jefferson County Fairgrounds, wrapping up Auto Med C30. Here with Glenn McWilliams, one of the big sponsors of this year's event. You're with Garage Condos. What do you guys do, and how does it play into what all these car lovers do? Sure, yeah, we, we build garage condos and sell them uh, their large format storage. Yeah. And they are, uh, they're perfect for car collections and, and all kinds of uh, vehicles. So it's a great spot for us to come out and show. So what, yeah, what exactly is a garage condo? How's that look compared to just a regular garage? So if you picture uh, like a like mini storage, but everything's bigger. The doors are 14 foot high, the, the ceilings go up to 24 feet. So there's room for car lifts and mezzanines, uh, about a thousand square feet. 
per unit. Wow. So lots of cars can fit in one unit. And so you build them on site or do you have a location where? We've got several locations around town. The yeah. current one is in Castle Rock. Yeah. So it's and kind of like a self storage for your car. It is, except you own it. You can, we sell it instead okay. of rent it. So yeah. you can you own your own spot and yeah. keep your collection safe and secure. Climate controlled, nothing's going to yep. bother your car. Yep, exactly. Wow. It's fascinating, and, but it makes sense. I mean, there's a car at Ferrari of Denver worth $4.6 million. <laughs> you want to take care of that investment. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you got a lot of prospective clients here today, I'm guessing. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. And obviously, if you just have a regular car that you love too, you could oh, do that. Absolutely. We And we have motorhomes and boats and, and all kinds of folks, small business uh, for some inventory or yeah. um, materials, equipment, that kind of thing as well. Yeah. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you, what do they do? Uh, GarageCondos.com is the easy way. Um, it can find my phone number and email address there. Okay, awesome. Glenn, thanks so yep, much for Thank you, appreciate stuff. it. Let's talk Ferraris. Let's send it back to Rachel. These cars have inspired so many Hollywood movie scenes. They're the Ferraris. Here we have a 1998 Ferrari 355 F1. The owner is Frank Stasabosco. This cool car will be featured in just a few minutes. Coming up next, we have a 2002 Ferrari 360 Modena F1. Race stripe and all. It is owned by John Nastasi. This is another cool car that will be featured. This is one of our showcase pieces. It's been out here on the Automezzi lawn this morning, gracing our lawn for us. It's a 2015 Ferrari La Ferrari. The owner is Darren Crystal. This car, folks, can go fast quickly. Another one that's been gracing our lawn here is this 2017 Ferrari F12 TDF. The owner is Darren Crystal. I believe this is a Tour de France model. It looks like we've got a series of reds coming up. And not just any reds, but some beautiful, bright, sleek reds. All slightly different shades, but all stunning. This is a 1984 Ferrari 308 GTS. The owner is Michael Franca. This car has been so well taken care of. It's a 1978 Ferrari 308 GTS. The owner is William Miller, and it has a removable hardtop that fits behind the two seats in case of inclement weather. It's a Magnum PI car as in the TV series from 1980 to 1988. Coming up next is an almost all original with only 19,000 miles. It's a Euro spec car with the very rare factory center locking wheels, a flat 12 mid 395 HP engine, and a top speed of 183 miles per hour. It's a 1988 Ferrari Testarossa. Owner, Artie Motati. And here we have a 2014 Ferrari 458 Italia. Owner, James Nides. <laughs> That's an agile car. Love this next one. It's a 1990 Ferrari Testarossa. The owner is Timothy Pilot. Legendary car. Sleek in silver. The 2007 Ferrari 599 GTB is owned by Ken Ballard. This car is functional, yet looks a little futuristic. And our final car in this series is a hot red 2010 Ferrari California. Owned by Josh Seidenberg. Innovative, legendary, and hear the engine roar. All of the cars that we have here today 
are here to support a fantastic cause for the Caruso Family Charity. If you haven't checked it out yet, check out their organization at carusofamilycharity.org. Time to head over to the answer to our trivia question. Do you know the answer? We are back live again with the Ferrari owners like Frank Strazovasco. Did I get it right? You did. I yeah. did. Man, it took some rehearsing. And your gorgeous <laughs> car. Tell me about this Ferrari. What model, what year, and tell me about the sound. Yeah, well, sound is awesome. It's a, it's a, a 98. Yeah. It's a 355 F1. Yeah. And uh, the 355 stands for a 3.5 liter, five valves per cylinder. Okay. And it certainly got to consider it the best sounding Ferrari because it, it, it emulates the old F1 cars with the way they, they scream. Yeah. Now, like like all Ferraris, it's got a tuned exhaust. Okay. So it's got like, like say, like a trumpet with a valve in it, you yeah. know, so it reconfigures the exhaust path at a particular engine RPM and throttle position. Yeah. And um, when it opens up, it just lets out a wail that is uh, <laughs> intoxicating. You got to really be into these cars to be that in tune with the sound of the thing, right? Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you'd know it when you hear it, yeah. <laughs> so you're part of a club. Tell me about the club. Yeah, so um, this is the Colorado chapter of the Ferrari Club of America. We have uh, different regions all around the country. And uh, we are part of the Rocky Mountain region, which is um, Kansas, New Mexico, Utah, Wyoming and Nebraska. Yeah. And we have about 160 members in the Colorado chapter and about 320 in the region. Yeah. So. What reactions do you get when you're driving this thing? Oh, it's great. You know, people always taking pictures of it. You know, if you're driving around or if you, or if you uh, go into a gas station to get gas, there's yeah. always someone coming up. Yeah. I let all the kids sit in it. And, and you know, it's, uh, it's amazing that the, the little kids, even up to four years old, they, they know cars and they, and they see it and they, they just smile and they have to come over. And they are, have to find out. are police officers drawn to it too? Or? I've, I've been stopped by police <laughs> officers just because they wanted to see the car. <laughs> nice. you know? It puts a scare in you, of course. <laughs> For but. sure. For sure. Well, we're going to let you drive away. I want you to okay. rev that bad boy when okay. you're leaving so we can judge for ourselves whether right. it is truly the best sounding Ferrari. Go ahead and pull off there. And as you leave, is this our next guy right here? I think it is. It's going to be John. Um, so as you leave, we're going to listen to this bad boy here from Frank Stradabasco. Strazabasco. <laughs> All right, now I understand what he was talking about. Frank, all right, go ahead and pull on out of here. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Gorgeous car. Let's bring John in next. Is this John right here? John Natazi. Nastazi, sorry. Uh, thanks for bearing with us here as we bring in our last Ferrari driver right here to talk to. Come on over here, John. Pull her right in here and we're going to talk to you. There you go. That's good, right there. All right, and hop on out here if you don't mind. We're going to go live with John here, right here, so he can talk about his gorgeous. This was the first model of the 360 to be produced uh, by the Medina, Medina, which was the birthplace of Enzo Ferrari. Let's talk about it. Hey, John, come on up here to the microphone if you could. We'll get it close to you, and we're going to keep our distance because of the rules of okay. Jefferson County right here. Get real close there if you can. Tell me your name and tell me about your Ferrari. Uh, name is John Nastasi. The car is a 2002 360 Modena. Yeah. Uh, with an F1 shifter. Yeah. Uh, it's got performance exhaust and performance transmission controlled units and high flow exhaust um, and carbon fiber interior. So it's a sweet little car. Uh, believe it or not, it's an 18 year old car and it's got 53,000 miles and you'd never know it. It runs like it was uh, out of the factory. So fantastic. Uh, maintained by my favorite uh, Motorola Motorworks. Oh, nice. Um, you know. I was just ineptly trying to explain the importance of the fact that it's a Modena. What is, what's that, why is that important? Modena is the home of Ferrari. Yeah. Um, that's where all their cars come out of. That's where their big factory is. Yeah. And this car was an uh, inauguration car for the town. Yeah. It was in benefit of the town. So it's the first Modena that they had. What about the camaraderie with you and other Ferrari owners? Why are you guys such a tight-knit group? Well, we all share the same, you know, same ideals, the same... Uh, um, capabilities. Uh, you know, we all like to drive. We all like to race the cars, and uh, 
you know, it's super to take these cars out on the track and see what they really will do, you know, versus, you know, just on the street where you go from zero to 60 and, you know, in two and a half seconds, you know, <laughs> big deal. You know, when you can go on the straightaway and do, you know, 140 miles an hour, it's a big difference. Oh yeah, I'm guessing that gets the blood going, doesn't it? It gets the blood going, it gets the foot going, it gets everything going. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet it does. All right, John, we'll let you get out of here with Thank this you. gorgeous car before anybody damages it. Thank you so much. It. Nice to meet you nice and good luck with everything, nice John. Nice to meet you. Good All luck right, you gorgeous Ferrari made in Modena, home of the Ferrari Motor Company. What an exciting show! Now it's time to announce the 2020 Director's Cup. I'll hand it off to Gina Halsey. Thank you everyone again for coming to Autometsi 30. This is our 30th year. It was a strange year. I'm sure we have a few technical difficulties, but thank you for your patience while we lived through La Passeggiata, which in Italy means a passageway. So we are very thrilled that we were able to pull this off. We have a lot of amazing vehicles and we will be awarding the People's Choice Awards over the next, uh, probably in three days from now. So go online, vote for your favorites, donate to Caruso Family Charities. You can find the link on our website. But we do have our Director's Cup winner here and we have our previous year's winner, Darren Crystal, his beautiful La Ferrari uh, Aperta was our winner last year and he has had the cup for a year and he will be passing it to our new winners Ryan and Becky Borman with their beautiful vintage Vespa and Boz. I think Boz stole the show today. So um, this is our new Directors Cup 2020 winner and the, they will be back next year to hand the cup off to our next winner. Congratulations. Can he drive with a cup? Let's see. <laughs> Have Boz hold the cup. <laughs> yes, this is the first time. I think you guys had a ringer. Congratulations. That was awesome. That was awesome. 
Okay. It's been another great year for sure. As you said, we sort of didn't know how this was going to turn out as we went into a Vagina. Great job as always putting this thing together. Really appreciate it. Well, we're really thrilled that we were able to pull it off. Um, and next year, hopefully we're back to our normal, beautiful showcase of cars we'll, where we'll have our 150 cars. But we followed the guidelines. We're very proud of that. We hope we raise some money. We need to. We need you to go donate so that we can blow the doors off of last year. So we have a goal, so we need to get over 10,000. And that way, we, I'd like to get to 20,000. Wouldn't that be great, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> a reminder, all that money goes to this great Denver charity, Caruso Family Charities, helping the families of those with terminally ill children. Jerry, you guys do such great work. It's such an honor. Oh, I just wanted to thank everybody, especially Gina. You guys are fantastic. We're so appreciative. And uh, every penny we raise will be put to good use. I promise you that. So thank you, guys. Well, until next year, thank you for joining us at La Passajada 2020. That's a wrap.